Hey everyone, so I just want to go through some things today and show my arid enclosures a little bit here. So all my snakes get have UVB, at least anytime I can, including import stuff when I get them. So these two enclosures are housing Boiga trigonata. Yeah, he's hiding. Can't even see his head. And they have UVB and a basking spot. These guys come from Iran and surrounding area. Okay, he's like, nope, no thanks. The Boiga trigonata melanocephala, which melanocephala is pretty straight to the point if he lets us see his little head. Clearly he does not want us to see him. Hello, little guy. Don't want to bother him too much. But anyway. Amazing species. Oh, there we go. Woohoo! You see your black little head there? Very small species of Boega. Very different compared to how people normally keep Boega. Um, they're known to be a tropical genus, not this. It's very different. Um, even the littlest bit of humidity with these guys will give them a respiratory infection. Unfortunately, these guys are just getting over one. Sorry about that cord situation, I'm moving things around. Um, these guys came with a teeny tiny little RI issue that they're finally getting over because during shipping, you know, they sometimes will pee in their cups and it raises the humidity, cause some issues, but they're eating on their own, having no problems, doing just fine now. But anyway, these guys only get three to four feet long lizard eaters. They can be put onto rodents. I am not interested in forcing them onto rodents at any point. I have some morning geckos breeding for feeders and they're very happy with it. But anyway, UVB, basking. These guys like to bask at around 100 to 105 degrees. Cool ends at 80. I try not and have the temperatures fluctuate because they seem to disagree with that when they start to fluctuate. Very uncommon in the hobby, if at all, except for a couple people. I really hope these guys do well. I'm sorry the female is not visible. She's in shed. Don't want to bother her too much. Like I would tickle the male a little bit, but I'd feel bad bothering him too. But at least we got a bit of a view here. Kinda, sorta. Their head is pretty iridescent, which is cool. But anyway, let's look at the next species. And here we are. These are my males. Um, last time I was really male heavy, and this time kind of slim pickings on the boys. So I used to keep this particular species about a year ago. Um, I had amazing success with them in terms of keeping them They're thriving. They bred. Unfortunately, my female passed away egg bound. Um, that really discouraged me and I ended up selling my entire group. Well, I regretted every bit of that. Decided, you know what? Time to get more. So I have two boys in here. This one's kind of Playing whack-a-mole with him popping up and down. Um, these guys come from like Iran, Egypt, Morocco, a lot of places. So let's do a temp check here. 112, 109, 102. Cool. Check out the cool end. 82, which is pretty good. 81. Their caves are much cooler. Sorry for bugging you, dude. These are a snake I don't encourage anyone touching. They have a very split personality. They'll be fine and dandy. They're good with people, whatever. And then all of a sudden they'll hate you and try and murder you. But that makes them fun. 
So all these crazy hot temps is actually pretty good. The temperatures drop. See, look at them hooding at me, little bugger. Temperatures at night, I allowed to drop down to 68, as most desert places would. Sometimes even colder in the dead of winter, which they are very much okay with. And if anyone's asking or curious, this is a UV reader. Um, they have a dragon lamp in here, which is 14% UV. You know, considering where they come from, they have very strong UV index, very high heat, and they use it well. For colubrid, these guys do have a very large gland. Um, they are rear fanged in that aspect, and they do kill mice very quickly. These guys will be getting a rodent diet, mixed with lizards, quail. They are very versatile when it comes to food. Um, they're also extremely arboreal considering their terrestrial terrain. I often see them up there hanging off the wires. It's actually kind of ridiculous. I need to staple those wires up. But they're always moving. Males especially are always on the move. It's pretty impressive. As you can see, these two have not stopped. And this is literally all day long. Until they bask, they'll stop there for about 10 minutes and then mosey on with their day. Um, they're very good diggers. They'll use their neck actually as a shovel and start digging away. It's pretty cool to see. Well, these guys are pretty new, so they are stressed out a little bit. Let's see. Watch this guy come. Very observant, very big eyes. You can actually look behind them. It's really cool. Oh, here's a cool behavior before we lose it. So what these guys are doing, this is very normal. They, it's thought they have a nasal gland of some sort that they rub onto their scales to protect themselves from heat, which actually would make a lot of sense considering where they come from. Um, I kind of look at it like a, a sunscreen to protect their scales, which I think would make sense. Why, hello. Are you displeased with me? You are displeased. They do that probably on average. I usually see it twice a week or so from an individual. Um, it's really nifty. The whole Samophid family will do this and consider they all come from the similar habitat. It makes sense. Let's see here. Check your temps out. This girl's been basking nonstop. I think it's a little cold. Eh, it's not too bad. Why don't we like to see at least that 110, but that's not awful. I wonder why they're Less perky today. But these guys have a strong UV as well. But the highest point. This is what we're looking at. And I see them up there quite often. And again, these girls also like to climb everywhere. Every night I kind of see them tucked away in the fixtures. Kind of strange, but I guess whatever makes them happy. And of course, she's in shed. Get some weight on her. She's new. Unfortunately, with these guys, they often come in in pretty bad condition. Um, they're very well known to have gland infections. Where gland infections, I mean, like their cheeks right here, where they have their venom glands, will swell, be infected, which then spreads to their face. It's really sad, and anytime I've seen this, the common denominator would be humid, cold, damp conditions. And with cold, I mean like 90 degrees or less. It's kind of crazy, but this is what I've been noticing, especially with people that maybe like resell them, keep them in a rack, especially because there's not a lot of ventilation. They often come in with this. I have two in quarantine that unfortunately are pretty severe 
that came to me with an infection. But now they're doing better, but they still need some medication long term. This girl is also a victim of that. You could see her jaw swollen here. But it's not just the infection in this case. Um, she does have a partially broken jaw when she came to me. That was infected. Hey. But it's healed. Um, it's just a little swollen still. She is on meds, but there is no serious infection with her. And ever since she's been put with the heat in this enclosure, it actually has been doing a lot better. It's just one of those things where if I kept her in a rack system or in quarantine of that kind of sorts, like sterile, she would actually do a lot worse. Not many snakes like that, but these are one of those ones where the more barren or sterile you keep them, the worse off they'll actually be. And this is going back with my previous experience where I've dealt with many of these issues before every time I got them in. Honestly, one out of every four often are sick, have an infection of some kind over simple, easy mistakes. And ultimately, they are so easy to keep. They just need good husbandry. And they're hardy. Like, they're bomb-proof snakes after that. Considering they could eat anything, they do so well. They're very bold, brave snakes. Like, you, you can't go wrong with them. It's the only thing is, don't touch them. They'll be happy. Your hands will be happy. And they will thrive. That's the most half-hearted hood I've ever seen. It's a shame they don't hood up very much. But they're calm, they're relaxed, which is good. This girl has been on here non-stop. That's so crazy. But they like it hot. Can't complain. This one's testing me a little bit. The angriest of all of them is in hiding right now. But they are so cool. Super amazing. Super intriguing. Um, I don't recommend people that don't have hook experience to keep these. Just in case. Because they could decide to go a little cuckoo once in a while. But it's worth it. Once you establish trust, there's no issues But anyway, that's it for my arid stuff. I don't keep a whole lot because I don't want this room to be a hot, humid room. Let's look at some of the other guys. If anyone's wondering, that's silicone, not poop or anything. Keep Caronius carinatus. Very, very fun. Very active. Genus. Got a pair of these. There's the female. There she is. Kind of just hanging out of her cork tube. These guys eat quail, which is great. But the scurrilous I have are another story. I'm usually feeding empty enclosures. As you can see, he is not. He's back there. Can't see him. But he's back there. My female is in here. She's eight feet and you can't even see her. Let's see. Maybe we could get a glimpse. Oh, a small glimpse. Thinking she could hide her big giant body. These guys are very shy compared to the Carinatus. I hope I could get these guys breeding, but I worry that this girl is just too old. My male is too young. It's just not a good mix. But I guess we'll see. And up here is my dreaded cohab enclosure. A lot of people might disagree with it, but you know what? Lots of space. 
this girl coming out of shed. Got that girl. Yeah. Surprise. Just like the bird. Hi. You want to come say hi? Come on. You guys are weird. But, you know what? Lots of space in here. It works well. And she will come up and say hi. Or not. She totally did it this time. Usually she does. But these guys are cool. By far one of my favorites in this collection. Very personable, very friendly. Can't go wrong. I'm using my little garbage cans when no one wants to eat. Do it next time, anyway. Maybe got some more climbing space in there for them. But it's not too bad. Anyway, this is my pointless rant video. If you want to call it a rant, and I would be amazed if you all watch this for freaking 17 minutes.